What up, Reader Fam? Welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm gonna be reacting to... Wow, that was aggressive. <laughs> Today, I'm gonna be reacting to some weird, unique, and bizarre bookshelves. I came across this BuzzFeed article, and I was like, I gotta react to these. I gotta see what these are all about. And I didn't want to do it alone. I wanted to do it with y'all, so that's why I'm bringing you this video. I haven't peeked at any of them, so they might be underwhelming, but I hope they're not. I hope they're really interesting. And hopefully, they don't give me any DIY ideas for my own bookshelves, because I've never really successfully completed a DIY. I always end up in the trash list. As y'all know, we have a sponsor today. As if you couldn't tell, it's kind of like right in your face. Wa pow, wa pow, wa pow. Our sponsor today is Book of the Month. Hey! So let's talk a little bit about our Book of the Month friends. Book of the Month is a popular and fast growing online book service for readers. Their mission is to promote new and emerging authors and help readers discover new books that they might love. How does it work exactly? Let me fill you in. Their team vets hundreds of books each month and gives readers their choice from a curated selection of new and early release titles so you can spend more time reading and less time researching. Which, let's be real, I'm always needing to find more ways to save time for reading. The more time I waste, the less time I have to achieve my goal of reading all my unread books before I die. The clock is ticking, boy. Tick tock. Mind you, participating in Book of the Month means adding to my TBR. But shh, it's fine. I'm not here to stress about my TBR today. They also have a skip policy making Book of the Month risk-free. You can skip any month, any time, and you will not be charged. If you want to get a new release hardcover for $9.99, you can use the code PACKABOOKNOW. I will leave a link down below in the description to where you can go and use that code. Which new releases are like typically $30 and higher, specifically for adult new releases. Like, those books are heckin' expensive. And for what? My wallet don't like it. It cries every time it buys an adult book. So you can save a little money using that code and the money that you saved can go towards your next book. <laughs> it's unboxing and haul time. I've got their selections for this month. Let's start with the book in the box. In the box here we have Half Sick of Shadows. This is a feminist reimagining of the Arthurian myth. Next, Malibu Rising. This is by that author that everybody loves, right? Taylor Jenkins Reads. She wrote that one book, Daisy Jones and the Six. That's the one. This book is about four siblings who throw a massive party to celebrate the end of summer, but things quickly go terribly wrong. Drama! Next, The Maidens. A psychological suspense weaving together Greek mythology, murder, and obsession. I'm actually really intrigued by this one. Next, Instructions for Dancing. Evie doesn't believe in love anymore, but when she one day witnesses a couple kiss and is hit with a vision of how their romance began and how it ended, she begins to question her thoughts on love. And the last selection I have here is Sky Fallen. This is the story of a woman who is used to going solo. I'm going solo, low, 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 low. But quickly finds out that there is one relationship that she just can't run away from. Those are the selections for this month. I think I am most excited for Nicola Yoon's Instructions for Dancing. It has been far too long since we've had a new Nicola Yoon book, and it's like, it's about time. It's about time you serve us with some greatness. Like, truly though, you guys, I have been hungry for a new Nicola Yoon book, and this one sounds fantastic. It is definitely gonna hit the spot, and I am ready for it. Again, I have a link down below in the description if you want to learn more about these books and the Book of the Month service. Go and clickety-click that link. And again, you can use the code PACKABOOK to get a new release hardback for $9.99. We love a deal, we love a steal, but especially when it relates to books. Now it's time to look over these bookshelves and judge them. I'm gonna be a judge today. Welcome to American Idol, or rather American Bookshelves. Well, I don't know if these are American Bookshelves. Welcome to X Bookshelves. Who needs the X Factor when you've got X books? None of these, yeah, none of these names are working at all. Let's just get to it, let's react. First up, we have this one. It's kind of dope. Is it practical? Not at all. But who needs a practical bookshelf when you've got a bookshelf like this? It's serving Haunted Mansion vibes. Ripley's Believe It or Not vibes. If I had either of those vibes in my house, I would go for this. I'd be all about it. And I know y'all would judge me for it. Next, this is a bookshelf that like plays the snake game through the shelves. You see, this is fun and all, and I think it's really cool, but I feel like I would just constantly be distracted by it. And instead of reading and tracing my eyes over words and processing them, I'd have my eyes glued to the bookshelf all day seeing how the snake is doing in the game. But also what I'm wondering is if you actually play the game of snake or is it like just automated? Because if it's automated, I don't want it. I want to play it. Put me in in coach. Like, what's the point if it's not playable? If it's not playable, then it's only there to distract. And that's the last thing I need. Like, I'm already way too good at distracting myself from reading as is, so I don't need anything else to add to my distraction list. I'm good. Thanks. Next. This is iconic. Like, what a beautiful way to repurpose a piano. I can't imagine repurposing a piano in any other way. This is the way to do it, people. I feel like this is the main character living in that house. It's the main event of the house. You walk in and bam. Attention grabber, attention stealer. It's beautiful. It's perfection. 
I need it, except I don't have room for it anywhere in my house. Someday though, maybe, someday I will have a house where I can have a piano shelf. If anybody has a piano laying around and they're not doing anything with it, send it my way. Next. Okay, listen, this is cool and all, and it definitely like suits the Seuss theme. Like I get it, I get the concept, they executed it well, but this bookshelf would drive me cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Like just looking at the picture is kind of making me annoyed. This one would also be a distraction because I'd be staring at it because of how much it bothers me. I almost can't take my eyes off of it even now because of how much it's bothering me. Plus you would literally only be able to have one shelf unless you had more custom built-ins to sit next to it. Mind you, not everybody needs a library in their house like me, but it's a no for me. No, thank you. Love a Dr. Seuss book, but I don't need it to come to life in terms of a bookshelf. Next. This one is actually smart. Like not only is it a reference to Lord of the Rings and will make fans swoon, Swoonville, USA, but it's also a practical use of space. It's not like in the way or anything. Plus who doesn't want to walk through doors and automatically be greeted by books? Just completely surrounded by books above and below you. That's the best greeting anybody can get, a book greeting. I don't need the person who lives in the house to say hello, I just need to be greeted by the books. In fact, the owner of the house can just not talk to me and I can just talk to the books. Like, perfect, perfect scenario. Next. Oh no, why does this one bother me? Like, it's interesting, it's unique, it's almost like having a tree in your house, I guess. And we love nature up in here, but for some reason it just bothers me. If you see the books on the actual shelf, you can see that some of them are kind of tilting a little bit, and I think that's because it's not super level, and that would push me over the edge. And I feel like the books would even at some point be pushed over the edge, naturally, because it's too slanted. I do like the idea of filling up a corner with books. That seems like a solid plan for me. And maybe I would like this one if it was more level. Next. Wait, this is actually so perfect. What a smart way to spice up a basic bookshelf. I wish I had drawing skills like this person because I'd go to town on my bookshelves and spice them the heck up. Don't tip me with another DIY. The only thing that would suck would be that you have to cover them up with books. You have this party in the back and book bouncers in the front blocking the view. Not that books aren't a work of art on their own. Because let's be real, if there was a book museum where you just go and look at books, I'd go. I'd be there every day. Wait, so, so a bookstore. Yep. Next. Um, I am envious. This is beautiful. I want to cry because of my jealousy. Can I please win the lottery so I can get rich and have something like this made? This is so extra and it's right up my alley. I am always drawn to the extraness. I have like an extra radar. I'm like, you said extra? I'll take it. You said obnoxious? I'll take it. You said over the top? I'll be there. Next. I've seen something like this in a bookstore before and again, it's a practical use of space. As someone who is constantly trying to find where to put my books that don't fit on my shelves because of the overflow, I am always looking for solutions of places where I can put my books. And this is a smart use of space. 10 out of 10 from me. The only time it's appropriate to walk on top of books. Next. A rocket ship bookshelf? I love this so much. I know it's meant for a child, but I'm still a child and I want this. This is also very extra, which might be why I'm like, I need it. Not me being like, I love practical bookshelves. And then seeing this and being like, a rocket ship? I must have it. Someone stop me, please. If you can, I'm kind of unstoppable over here. Next. Ooh, this is nice. This is apparently in a hotel, which I really like and I think that it works for a space like that. I wish more cafes had something like this. There's actually a local cafe in my area that has a bookshelf where you can take one and leave one. And I just love having something like that even though I have yet to take advantage of it. I've yet to participate in the take a book, leave a book party, but someday I will. I just feel like I wanna keep the books that I love and I don't wanna like leave a book that I didn't like, but also like just because I didn't like it doesn't mean somebody else won't like it, you know? So we'll see. Next. Again, this one is really unique and I think if it works for you, I'm glad for you but it just gives me a headache looking at it. I think mostly because I feel like it'd be a nightmare to organize and I'm not looking for a nightmare when it comes to bookshelves. I'm looking for a full on dream. Next, we've got a Doctor Who bookshelf. I feel like if I was into Doctor Who, I'd die of happiness, I'm sure. But I tried to get into Doctor Who and it just wasn't for me. R.I.P. Please don't hate me. I gave it a try, it just wasn't for me. It didn't work out. Next. No, 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 it's giving me a headache. I wouldn't mind this being in like a cafe or something like that, but that's the only place I'd ever want to see it in. But I'd also pretend not to see it. I'd turn my back to it. I just don't like the messy look of it. Like it's a chaotic mess. Not even a beautiful mess in my opinion. And there is a difference. Chaos only. Not for me. Next. Oh no. Oh no, 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 no. There's just too much happening here and it's hurting my soul. If you love this, I'm happy for you. I'm glad we can all be different and exist in the same world at the same time, but I just could, I could never. Nope. This is just too much for me. Pass, pass, pass. Next. Oh, I've actually always wanted something like this, but I never have a space that like allows for it. But some Someday, maybe someday. I really wonder how many bookshelf styles I'll go through in my lifetime. Stay tuned to find out. Next, I think this is the last one actually. Oh.
more. Okay, you see, this is a fun option, but my has been red portion of that will need to be a few miles long, and my will be red portion needs to be like 20 miles long, and that's on having too many unread books. All right, guys, that's it for me reacting to these bookshelves. I feel like it was less reacting and more me being judgy, Mr. Judgy McJudger Pants. There were some that I loved and some that I despised. I think my favorite had to be the piano option because it was just top tier. You guys should let me know down below in the comments which one was your favorite, which one would you want to have in your house. Let me know in the comments down below. Again, thank you to Book of the Month for sponsoring this video. If you guys would go and check out the link in my description, it would really help me out. If you like this video, be sure to go and hit that like button. If you want to see more bookish content from me, be sure to go and hit subscribe or go and hit that bell icon and you'll be notified every time I post new videos. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope your day is bright, that tomorrow is brighter. Keep reading what your heart desires and I will see you soon with a new video. Bye all. I can't I can't imagine repurpose repurpose